All right, let's talk about what we all really want to talk about. Listen, the quarterback stuff, the wide receiver stuff, you know, whatever. We're here to talk interior line play, interior offensive line versus interior defensive line. Listen, uh, you know, I know it doesn't always get the clicks that some of the other stuff does, but it's still important to talk about. It's still a very massive part of football. So I actually think there's a really unique situation going on in the 49ers Lions game that, uh, you know, could actually make or break this game. I really do. So this is the uh, starting lineup according to Pro Football Focus. So, you know, for the, and again, starting lineup for defensive linemen is a bit weird because obviously it's not like four guys are out there every single snap, but you know, Chase Young, Javon Hargrave, Eric Armstead, and Nick Bosa are the four, which again, uh, I feel like people have all of a sudden turned on uh, uh, everyone else except for Nick Bosa. There's a lot of really talented players here. It is not just Nick Bosa, although he is his, you know, he is a, a monster in his own right. But for the Lions offensive line, okay, we might be saying, well, it's great on great, right? Both of these units have done great this season. And while that's kind of true, you know, uh, Taylor Decker, yeah, that's great. Left guard, well, wait a second, who's that guy? Okay, well, let's move on. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, Frank Ragnow, yeah, sure, great. Uh, Graham Glasgow, uh, Panay Sewell, yeah, awesome. Uh, even Sam Laporta, uh, more of a receiving tight end than a, a blocking tight end, but he can block as well. Uh, so, okay, good stuff there. But let's go to this guy, Coyote uh, Awosika is the left guard. He was the guy who came in after the Jonah Jackson injury. Jonah Jackson will not be playing in this conference championship, although maybe could be back for the Super Bowl. And that could be a pretty big deal. You see his current, you know, status. He was an undrafted free agent who has not gotten enough. You, you might say, hey, a decent grade in 2021. Well, he has not had enough playing time to qualify in any year he's been out there. Although, this year with the Lions, a 57.2 grade, don't get me wrong, that's definitely not like starter quality or anything like that, but it's not like he's been a mess out there. In the Tampa Bay game when he had to fill in, I thought he kind of survived it is how I would say. Uh, there were definitely times when he got beat, but he had times like this where, okay, this is going to be a Kalijah Cansey one-on-one matchup. Watch how when it begins, you know, Cansey very explosive and uses his hands very well. So definitely is able to get towards the outside. And now is going to try and just see if he can overpower, uh, you know, uh, Awasika here. Sorry, bit of a tough name, Awasika. But watch it, Awasika, again, he survives it, right? He doesn't allow himself to get fully overpowered. Now pressure came elsewhere and Goff got taken down anyway. But still, you know, he, again, am I going to sit here and say that was a perfect block? No, but you don't need him to pull off any perfect blocks. You just need him to do enough. A play like this, another one where, I mean, so what's going to happen on this play? It's a third down and 11. It's a pass blocking situation. And it's Vita Vea going up one-on-one -on -one against Awasika. And watch what happens. Again, watch this swim move by Vea. Gets his right arm over uh, Awasika. And that seems to be the key area where I've seen him struggle. Is just being able to, you know, use his hands quickly at the line. Guys at the NFL move so quick that that is always a tough adjustment for guys who don't have a lot of playing time at the NFL level. Now, Awasika does do a good job of pushing Vea towards the side. And you know, they aren't able to get the pressure there. Although, Maybe they kind of did. Goff did still kind of hurry up that throw and throws it away. It looked like a little bit. Maybe there was some communication thing. I don't know. Uh, but it looked like maybe that uh, pressure still could have affected things. And that is a notable factor as well, right? Just because you're not letting your quarterback get hit doesn't mean it's still not affecting the play. But still, I think for Detroit, you'll say, okay, if this is the disaster, well, we can still work with this, right? Especially one, you know, like, like let's take this play, for example, just as, you know, an example. So two interior defensive linemen, right? That's how you typically do things. Yep, that makes sense. But of course, there are three interior offensive linemen. And now, you know, I mentioned the other uh, two guys. You have Graham Glasgow, who's very good. And you have Frank Ragnow, who is injured, but he's amazing, right? So Ragnow being the center, I think Ragnow might, I mean, again, what do you think you should do? Well, you should have a ton of one-on-one -on -one matchups uh, with Glasgow, and you have Frank Ragnow helping out uh, Awasika here. That That's logically what would follow. Something like that. I mean, definitely, I think that, you know, uh, if, if in practice, I think, I don't know, uh, Frank Ragnow might be pra doing a lot more practice going to his left than going to his right in pass protection. That might be what you do. Again, run blocking is a little bit different, obviously, because you kind of want to have someone blocking everybody there. Uh, you know, you don't want to have just full-on double teams, maybe a double team at the line, and then move up to the next level. But in pass protection, you can use that to help out. But for San Francisco, that's where things get a little bit interesting. So you might sit here and say, well, let's put Javon Hargrave you know, or Eric Armstead, whichever guy we like better. Let's put him on Awasika one-on-one. -on -one. Well, that might not actually be the preferred strategy. 
Because, like, something like this is a, definitely a way that you could see them having success. Where this is Eric Armstead, who, again, really underrated player for the San Francisco 49ers. He really doesn't get the credit he deserves. And, again, you could sit here and say, okay, let's put him on the backup guard. Or you could say, you know what, he's a good player. Yes, so is, uh, you know, uh, so is Graham Glasgow. Absolutely. That is good on good. But Eric Armstead could just say, you know what, I'm going to go on that and see if I can win enough. Watch on this play as it begins. This is, you know, against the Green Bay guard in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. It's really going to be Armstead's right hand on this play. Again, hands are so important. So, uh, you know, getting that right hand kind of on that uh, left shoulder area of the guard that he's going up against. Watch him really shove aside 75 there for Green Bay. Doesn't quite impact the play on that one, but comes very close. Gets, gets the, you know, the win, right? Again, we want to talk about winning on certain plays and stuff like that. That is definitely what happened. And so, it, to me, that is a very interesting thing to note. As I think for both teams, it, to me, this is just something you look at and say, wow, that Detroit Lions, you know, offensive line is amazing. I'll pull up the, you know, chart again. But look at the offensive line. It's good across the board. There is one weak spot. And I'm so fascinated in how exactly they're going to attack this. And there's other ways you can attack this. I mean... Uh, you know, kind of reminds me a little bit of like w what you saw in the Super Bowl with the Rams and the Bengals. Now, it's not quite that ma much of a mismatch because the Bengals had a bad guard playing against a team that had Aaron Donald. But in that game, you definitely saw how the factor of Aaron Donald and the fact, the fact that they knew they were going to be helping out a specific guard all game, the way the Lions were, or excuse me, the way the, way the uh, Rams were able to kind of scheme stuff up and scheme pressure up that way. And in this scenario, it's not just about, you know, matchups, although that also comes into play. You also have to wonder about, do you run some stunts in this scenario? I'll draw one on the screen. Why not? Uh, you know, you see, like, okay, if that's how this is going to work, where that's what you, uh, ha you know, want to have happen, well, if this is what you're doing all game, San Francisco can, you know, they can run plays to, you know, make, uh, to find a way to counteract that. If they know which way the center is going, and if, if Nick Bosa is going to be lined up towards the right on some of these plays, well, what can he do? Well, he could do something like that, you know, and then at this point, who would be there? You can run a stunt and get through to the quarterback, you know, uh, unabated at this point, essentially. Uh, I mean, this is definitely something that you have to be careful of if you're in Detroit. You just do. You have to be mindful of these kind of things. So, again, there's ways you can do it. And there is ways that you can, you know, minimize the damage for the Detroit Lions. And it's, it is unfortunate that I think they've, you know, they've had guys healthy, but now you're know, getting an injury at the worst possible time. That being said... I think if you're going to have an injury, this is probably where you should have it in terms of, uh, you know, if you're going to have an offensive line injury, it probably, you know, this, the guard would be a good situation. And again, Jonah Jackson's a great player, but on the Lions, he's like their weakness just because they have so many other great guys, right? So this is probably the one area where you can maybe withstand it. But again, there's ways to exploit it for uh, San Francisco and it's something to just keep an eye on on Championship Sunday. So, yeah, those are my guard thoughts, my Lions left guard thoughts. Uh, always interesting how these, you know, guys have to step up. Again, the other thing is what if what if uh, Awasika ends up having a good game and they don't even have to worry about this? Like, that's always where the interesting storylines come into play here, but definitely something to keep an eye on. That's what I think about all of this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.